Alright, he's made here. So, uh, I finally hit that uh, 600 mile mark, so it's time to do the first oil change on my uh, Victory Impulse right here. So, uh, these, are the, these are the goodies I have, uh, the tools to do it. I'm going to do it myself. Um, it's a 17 for the, the drain plug on the bottom, and it's a 14 for the fill plug. And this is the Allen wrench that comes with, uh, um, it looks like a 5 or something, 5 mil. This is the Allen wrench that came with the bike, so I'm going to use that. For the, this is for the, um, the level, the level check. And then I got two quarts of uh, Amsoil Synthetic Metric Motorcycle Oil, 10W30. So this is the, this is what was recommended on the, from the Bramo site. Um, and it's expensive, it's $14. I made a bit. I made a video about it. <laughs> so anyway, the other oil I have here is this Lucas stuff. I managed to find this at O'Reilly's for uh, for less, like nine bucks or something, much cheaper. So I'll probably be buying this from now on. But it meets all the specs. It's synthetic, 10W30, formulated for wet clutches. So that's that would definitely uh, do the trick right there. Also, I want to say I have a, I have my rear stand too. I'll be changing on the rear, rear stand. So it raises the bike up, and I think you're supposed to do it like on the it while it's level. So all right, here we go. So first, I'm gonna put it on the on the rear stand. Okay, there it is on the center on the rear stand. Um, just make sure the handlebars are straight, so it's not crooked or anything. Okay, then just go ahead and get a drain pan of some sort to drain your oil into. Also, I wanted to point out that uh, in the manual it says to uh, to ride the bike for five to ten minutes before you change the oil, um, and there's a good reason for that. I had just Brendan, I just got back from a ride, so it, that's why I'm going to change it right now. Um, the um, the reason you change it after like riding the bike is so the oil is warm. And I, you know, it goes through everything, so it, it flows out smoother. It flow, it'll flow out more smoother, and it'll take more of the, you know, the dirt and stuff out with it. So that's one reason. Also, it's kind of warm right now too, so it should, it should flow out pretty good. Um, the 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 oil is less viscous when it's warm, and that's you know that's pretty much like all vehicles. You got to do that. So all right, now we're gonna get a. So let's uh, first uh, let's go crack the um, all these. Uh, so I will be using a, a method in the in the manual, um, the uh, alternate method from the from the um, the owner's manual, and that would require you using one of these a funnel. But uh, it'll be easier than to fill it up the you know the normal way. You have you would need like like a hose to get it in there. All right, so I'm not gonna take the fill plug out. I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna loosen it because I'm not gonna really use it to fill up the bike. Also, take note that it's a it's really a thin bolt, so uh, be careful not to strip it. I may strip it up. But we'll see. Uh, okay. So just make sure you got a good a uh, good grab on it with the wrench. So I'm just gonna loosen it. That's all I'm gonna do. Let's as much as I can I guess okay so so the the oil flows out better and then right here is the um, the level checking plug all right so yeah I'll just go ahead and take out the the level plug <coughs> it's in there quite tight so it's like hiding behind the foot peg here just take it out all the way make sure you don't lose that nut there. Uh, not the nut, the washer. Oil should not be spilling out if the level is correct. So we'll find that out now. I've never checked it before, so it's quite a bit of threads too. Okay. Yeah, a lot of oil, oil came out. So yeah, it's pretty nasty, the oil. So I guess just let that drip out first. So the, the washer kind of stayed on there, so. 
Oh, yeah, the oil is pretty nasty. Ugh. It does remind me of gear oil. <laughs> There's a lot of like a fi really fine metal uh, shavings in it. All right, so that kind of leads me to believe that the the transmission is uh, overfilled on this bike. <laughs> All right, so right under there is the drain plug, and as you can see. It's kind of alarming because uh, there's like a lot of dirt around it and the only reason there would be dirt around it is if, if there was oil leaking from it so the transmission must be leaking All right, some kind so of I'm oil. just gonna go and uh, and uh, loosen the drain nut now uh, yeah, you know what I'm gonna loosen it with the wrench first put the camera down or I can just use my buddy to tripod okay I probably should well I can clean it after I guess there it is down it goes look at that oh my look at all those shavings in there that is pretty bad but I, I guess that's that's normal for breaking so let's kind of put that somewhere safe right here look at all that oil gross it's full of metal so uh, that's why it's all gray it's supposed to be clear, right? That's only 600 miles. <laughs> so that's why it's a good idea to change your oil after break-in. So I'm just going to let that drain for like 10 minutes or something. And then uh, make sure I clean this, uh, this drain plug here. Look at that drain plug. A lot of metal on it. So you can tell there's a lot of metal um, shavings in the oil. Because uh, that sludge is sticking to the magnet right there. See, it's not not dripping off of there. There's so much oil in the, and there's so much uh, metal in the oil. All right, but that's that should be normal. <laughs> it should go away after a while. Okay, so it's been uh, draining for quite a while. It's not dripping anymore, so that's good. Um, so you want to make sure you clean this. Uh, this drain plug so you if you remember what this looked like before there was like a glob of, um, of metal shavings and oil all over it and uh, oh, it's not a good look at how much play that uh, that washer has I don't think that's the right washer for this <laughs> um, anyway so that's what it's supposed to look like when it's clean so you want to make sure you clean this really well clean all the shavings off you could because this doesn't have an oil filter, it um, th that stuff just swims around it all the time. So this is this is your only, this is your only thing that's gonna catch you know the dirt floating around in the oil. And uh, so I'd imagine like every time, probably the next couple oil changes, it's gonna be like that probably. All right, so now that's all clean. Um, what we should do now is put the drain plug back in. drip pan out of the way. Hopefully it's not dripping anymore, but uh, I'm gonna go get a rag and I'm gonna go clean underneath here. I probably should just use a napkin. This is pretty nasty oil. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just clean around the area where the um, drain plug is. And make sure you clean it pretty good because uh, um, if it if it's dirty, if it's dirty like it was before, I'm assuming that the oil is leaking from it and I may have to take this in for a service, a warranty service to fix that. It looks like it might be leaking from here. Alright, anyway, so it's pretty clean. My drain plug is clean. Let's try to clean up as much of that oil and shavings as you can. And then just go ahead and put that that drain plug back in. If the, wa if the washer is still good, you can go ahead and reuse it. I'm assuming it's still good, so I can feel that the threads are a little dirty. But it's it's growing in, so I don't know. It's kind of weird. Alright, yeah, just go ahead and tighten that. Okay, it's on there. For some reason, it, uh, it was kind of not uh, going on very smoothly, so I kind of took it off and put it back in. Um, and then I just I snugged it with the wrench real quick. Uh, it doesn't have to be super tight. I'm sure there's some kind of torque spec for it. 
Now what you want to do is uh, wipe the the weep hole down. Make sure it's nice and clean so you can see the oil coming out of it. Okay. So now I'm going to go fill it with oil. Um, so the easier way to fill it with oil is to use this uh, this guy here. The, the drain. Uh, this is this. Is, it's like some kind of vent for the um, for the transmission. So here. so you can see that the, there's a hose here that goes to the top of the transmission, and uh, that 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 said that is one of the approved ways to change the oil uh, to add oil to this bike. Because uh, the other way to add oil is to add it to the weep, to the hole right here, and it's kind of like in a hard place to get to, you know. You have to use a hose to do it. So I'm gone ahead and loosened it, the clamp here. And you can go take this plug out, and vent the cap. Uh, it's a little hard to take out. Okay, I got the plug out. That's what it looks like. It is indeed a vent plug. It's a it, like it plugs it, but there's a vent on it to its ticket. So there's a you know advanced pressure from the transmission. So there it is. And then uh, all you have to do is get your funnel. Make sure it's clean. I gotta clean this first. Let's stick it in there, and then just add oil. Um, so it should be a little more than one quart, is what I've heard. So we'll see. Oh yeah, make sure uh, there's something to catch. Make sure there's something to catch the oil on the other side too. All right, so for the funnel, you can probably use a. It's it's probably better to use a, one of those longer funnels with the long, uh, with the long tip. But uh, this one will work. Just uh, make sure it doesn't fall off when you're adding oil. So like I said, this is the oil I'm using: AMS oil, synthetic metric motorcycle oil, 10W30. 10W30 synthetic. You gotta make sure it says it's approved for wet clutch. Wet clutch compatible. There we go. Alright, so what I would do is I would uh, make sure that uh, that the uh, um, so it's about one quart, so go ahead and pour like maybe like three quarters in there and then check the other side. So I'm just gonna kinda do this for a demonstration and then. Uh, and then it'll just go down there. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait till maybe it gets to almost a quart in there, and then uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and check the the fill fill hole, the the weep hole. Okay, so I've pretty much just I put the whole uh, the whole bottle in there, and there's oh there it is is weeping out already. So it's like one whole bottle. So. I don't know, maybe I should wait for it to stop dripping a little bit. Yeah, yeah so... So pretty much one quart will do it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the plug in now. Uh, maybe we'll wait for it to stop dripping a little bit. But I feel bad wasting all that oil, you know? Is, this thing is a pain in the ass to put back in because it, there's all this crap in the way of it. All right, yeah. So, so one quart. I only needed one quart. That's cool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe my hands real quick. Go get the Allen wrench. And snug that bolt. All right. So I remember there was like extra oil in there, so I guess it should be okay. So I just used the whole bottle, so uh, it was pretty much almost empty, and then uh, and then I put a little bit more. It still wasn't weeping out, and then then it started weeping. So so that's the one of the problems of doing it this way is you have to walk around to the other side and look and see if it's coming out or not. But there we go. That's it. And then just go ahead and uh, go ahead and tighten the the other fill. Bolt. The only reason I really loosen this is 
to vent the to vent the transmission the gearbox. I'll just go ahead and uh, snug it. Be very careful. It's a very thin bolt. Because it may strip easily. Okay, should be good. I I kind of don't like how that wire rests on there. It could get cut on that. So I'll have to keep my eye on that. And then uh, that's pretty much it. And then just uh, clean up the area. Put the put the the vent plug back in. Try not to make a mess. So there, I, it was like pretty much where the the two O rings was at. So. of the way. Okay, and then just go ahead and tighten the clamp. Alright, you're gonna have to use a screwdriver. Probably helps if you use a probably helps if you put it in a Put it in in a way arc. You can use a screwdriver, or you could use a stubby screwdriver too. Uh, helps. So this way is actually pretty good. It's pretty easy. It's just a. Uh, it's kind of difficult to take that that cap out. Okay. There it is. That's it. It looks like the cap has been hitting the plastic here, though. Kind of don't like that. You may be able to bend this bracket here, so it won't do that anymore. Yeah, it is hitting the bracket. Go figure. I don't know. You'd have to find a way to to get it to angle out like that. But yeah, it's, it's gonna it's gonna it's already been making a mark there. It's kind of suck, dude. <laughs> if you just kind of leave it out a little bit, maybe it won't do that. All right. So there it is, all done. And then, uh, then all we have to do is uh, clean up. So I use the whole bottle. That's good. Let's go ahead and clean the area where it leaped out of. And that's it. Just make sure there's no leaks or anything. But uh, oil change. Complete. All right, hey, this make out. But uh, so I just wanted to point out that uh, uh, how much oil that you put in might be dependent on like if your bike is leaning or not. I can tell that the bike is I don't know the bike is pretty much straight up and down, so I think it's fine. Um, if you did it actually, if you did it with on the stand, if you did it on the stand, you would put more oil in it. So I don't know, maybe they did it on the stand, but there's ex there's a little bit extra in there, so. Should be fine. Alrighty, all done.